In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. Fifty days after Easter, we gather in the upper room of this cathedral, and the risen Christ himself stands among us and breathes into us his Spirit, the Holy Spirit who is the life of the Church and without which we are not the body of Christ but a corpse. So let's greet the Lord Jesus and open ourselves to his Spirit in acknowledging that we have sinned and acclaiming the mercy which he is. Have mercy on us, O Lord. For we have sinned against you. Show us, O Lord, your mercy. And grant us your salvation. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life.
Gloria in excelsis Deo.
Let us pray. O oh God, who by the mystery of today's great feast sanctify your whole church in every people and nation, pour out, we pray, the gifts of the Holy Spirit across the face of the earth. And with the divine grace that was at work, when the gospel was first proclaimed, fill now once more the hearts of believers. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When Pentecost Day came round, the Apostles had all met in one room, when suddenly they heard what sounded like a powerful wind from heaven, the noise of which filled the entire house in which they were sitting. And something appeared to them that seemed like tongues of fire. These separated and came to rest on the head of each of them, they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak foreign languages as the Spirit gave them the gift of speech. Now there were devout men living in Jerusalem from every nation under heaven. And at this sound they all assembled, each one bewildered to hear these men speaking his own language. They were amazed and astonished. Surely, they said, all these men speaking are Galileans. How does it happen that each of us hears them in his own native language? Parthians, Medes, and Elamites, people from Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt, and the parts of Libya around Cyrene, as well as visitors from Rome, Jews and proselytes alike, Cretans and Arabs. We hear them preaching in our own language about the marvels of God. The word of the Lord.
find my joy in the Lord. Lord, send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. No one can say, Jesus is Lord, unless he is under the influence of the Holy Spirit. There is a variety of gifts, but always the same Spirit. There are all sorts of service to be done, but always to the same Lord, working in all sorts of different ways in different people. It is the same God who is working in all of them. The particular way in which the Spirit is given to each person is for a good purpose. Just as a human body, though it is made up of many parts, is a single unit because all these parts, though many, make one body. So, it is with Christ. In the one spirit, we were all baptized. Jews as well as Greeks, slaves as well as citizens. And one spirit was given to us all to drink. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. In the evening of the first day of the week, the doors were closed in the room where the disciples were for fear of the Jews. Jesus came and stood among them. He said to them, peace be with you, and showed them his hands and his side. The disciples were filled with joy when they saw the Lord and he said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father sent me, so I am sending you. After saying this, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. For those whose sins you forgive, they are forgiven. For those whose sins you retain, they are retained. The Gospel of the Lord. We know the first Pentecost happened in Jerusalem, but no one knows where exactly in the city the Holy Spirit came upon the disciples. However, there's a tradition that it happened in the same upper room, the Cenacle, where the Last Supper had been celebrated. Now, whatever the historical fact may have been, there's real theological truth in this tradition. Holy Thursday and Pentecost Sunday may be separated in time, but they are parts of the single event of God's self-giving. At the Last Supper, Jesus gives the disciples the gift of himself in the Eucharist. At Pentecost, Jesus gives the disciples the gift of the Holy Spirit. Symbolically, then, they happen in the one place. And this is why Christians through the ages have built churches like this. Because once the Spirit is breathed forth, the upper room is no longer back there and then. The upper room is always and everywhere. The event of God's self-giving is not once upon a time, but erupts into every time and place. It's ceaseless and limitless. It's on offer here and now without reserve to every human being. And that's why we build churches in every time and place. Buildings like this, which point to the ceaseless and limitless self-giving of God to every human being. That's why in 1848, 
the Catholics of Brisbane began to build the first church, which became the first cathedral, now known as St. Stephen's Chapel. They built on the land of others, land by the river which the local indigenous people had claimed as their own for thousands and thousands of years. And that cannot be forgotten through this year. In time, the chapel became too small to accommodate the growing Catholic community. And the first bishop, James Quinn, shortly after his arrival in 1861, decided to build a new and much larger cathedral, which has become the building in which we now gather. His plans were in fact grander than what we see now, in part because he wanted the new cathedral to announce the dignity of the Catholic Church and the Catholic people who gathered in the new city of Brisbane. But it was also the Church's way of saying that here God gives himself to all, that here Jesus gives the gift of himself in the breaking of the bread and the gift of the Holy Spirit in the outbreathing of God. Here, in Brisbane, far from what they called home, they built a temple to the bread and the breath, the breaking and the breathing. And in doing so, they said that this was home, not just for them, but for God. They built a temple of stones and steel and glass, in that sense a building like any other. It rose by stages and has seen many, many modifications through its 150 years. The nave and sanctuary came first, then the facade, then the transepts, the windows, and the vanished frescoes were gradually added. Then came the great renovation of 1989, which saw this new sanctuary and the Blessed Sacrament Chapel. And then finally the organ with its pipes was added in 2000. All of which is to say that a cathedral is never finished. Even in my own years, there have been modest changes to both cathedral and chapel. But changes there will be until the end of time. Because the self-giving of God has no end. It is ceaseless and limitless. Yet there was more to this temple than stone and steel and glass. Because it has also been a temple of word and music and sign. Within these walls, the word of God was heard, since God never ceases to communicate to his people. In the liturgy, the word of God was proclaimed with a special power, as it has been today. But people also came here to pray at other times, which means they came, first of all, to listen to God, as they still do but they came also to speak their words of faith to God, the God to whom they had listened, as they still do. Some of those words are spoken, others are sung. And what a tradition of sacred music has emerged over time in this place. Yet the place has been filled not only with holy sounds, it's also been filled with holy signs everywhere you look, windows, works of art, banners, candles, all speaking of God to the eye, just as the holy sounds have spoken to God, of God to the ear. But this cathedral has also become a temple of living stones, building up the faithful who gather here as a priestly people called out of darkness into light. 
People make buildings, it is said, and then buildings make people. That's true, and it's especially true of churches. But it's not just the building that has made people here. It's been the God dwelling here who has shaped the Catholic people of Brisbane like a potter with his clay. Through all the vast changes since 1873, that has remained constant. The self-giving God has not ceased to mould a people for himself and for his mission to the world. If that were not true, then these would be just dead stones. But because it is true, these are living stones and so are we. This cathedral then is a temple of the living God who alone can make of us living stones. On this feast of Pentecost, as we look back 150 years, we say that this building has always been and still is a temple of the Holy Spirit whose breath makes the bread, the body of Christ, to feed the church which also becomes his body broken for the life of the world. The building has changed and so too have the people walking through its doors. But that has not changed. We have much to celebrate in this sesquicentenary year that stretches before us. We have much to remember, many stories to tell, much for which to give thanks to both God and to those who have gone before us. We begin the year of celebration on this Pentecost Sunday, and we will conclude it on Pentecost Sunday next year. We recognize that this Cathedral of St. Stephen and the community that has gathered here are the work of human hands, yes, but are above all the work of the Holy Spirit who not only gathers us in this space, but sends us forth from here on mission, as he did the apostles from the upper room at the first Pentecost. I conclude with the prayer which I have offered for this sesquicentenary year. Down by the river, Heavenly Father, on this earth, our mother, where children of the dreaming long made a home before us, our forebears in faith have built this mother church of St. Stephen, a family home for you and us. Stone by stone and prayer by prayer, they have raised this holy house, familiar forms on foreign land, a place where Brisbane could know Christ's sacrifice and feast, where you could speak and we could listen, where the tide of your mercy could flow. Here, saints and sinners have come, bringing their young and their dead, all their hopes and their dreams. Through times of sorrow and joy, the stones have spoken of Easter, of a life that is bigger than death, of a love that has the last word. Through 150 years, we have made the building and the building has made us a temple of living stones. 
Now we tell the story of your grace, thankful as we remember. By that same unfailing grace, may this cathedral never cease to be a home for all at the heart of the city and a house for you, God with us, on this earth, down by the river. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. It is faith that has made us one through 150 years. So let's together profess the faith of the whole church. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, Born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Like those who have gone before us, we have this morning listened to the word of God. The time has come now for us to give voice to our faith and our prayer. So let's speak our words to the God who listens. For Pope Francis, bishops, priests, deacons, and ministers of the church that inspired by the spirit they may boldly proclaim the joy of the gospel and the hope of the resurrection. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the nations, that they will be renewed and transformed by the Spirit into communities of peace, mercy and compassion. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the people of the Archbi Archdiocese of Brisbane, as we embark on the special year of celebration for this cathedral, that strong in faith and love and built on love, we will come to know the hope to which we are called. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who live in this great Southland of the Holy Spirit, 
especially our First Nations people, that we will walk together the path of reconciliation and harmony towards a better future for all. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all in our midst and in the world who struggle with loneliness, poverty and illness, that many helping hands will reach out to them and offer support. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the recently deceased and for those whose anniversary of death occurs around this time, that they will be raised to glory by the power of the Holy Spirit. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Through your Son, Lord God, you breathe your Spirit into us. Listen to us now as your Spirit becomes our prayer, and answer us for the sake of Jesus, your Son, firstborn from the dead, the Lord for ever and ever. Amen.
brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Stephen, St. Mary of the Cross, St. Philip, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, Mark, our bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. Throughout the path of the brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you for their passing kind and witness to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and all the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching we dare to say
us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our day, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. As we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you. My peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
Let us pray. O oh God, who bestow heavenly gifts upon your church, safeguard, we pray, the grace you have given, that the gift of the Holy Spirit poured out upon her may retain all its force, and that this spiritual food may gain her abundance of eternal redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. Through this sesquicentenary year, as we celebrate the 150th of the cathedral, a message stick will go through the archdiocese because the cathedral is not just about the cathedral, it is the mother church of the entire archdiocese. So a message stick bearing the good news of Jesus Christ, but in the accents of our indigenous peoples, will go throughout the diocese for the next 12 months. And we bless the message stick now, which will be brought forward by Cynthia Rowan, one of our indigenous sisters who has been such a part of the life of the Archdiocese. So as we begin this year of celebration, for this building which stands on the traditional lands of Yagra Turubul people, we take a symbol of this ancient culture, the longest continuous culture on the planet. A message stick was a traditional form of communication used by the First Nations peoples to send messages or news to others of important events to ask for safe passage through the land belonging to other clans or tribes, and to invite neighboring groups to ceremonies, corroborees, and other celebrations. So Cynthia brings it forward. Cynthia is a Biragaba woman, and we bless it now as it sets out on its year-long journey. Let us pray. Blessed are you, God of this place, Lord of the world, who through your Son Jesus accept our praise and bestow your gifts upon us. Bless this message stick, which will travel throughout the Archdiocese, and grant that it may draw us together, all of us, in oneness of faith and hope and love. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Thank you, Cynthia. God bless you and your people. The Lord be with you. May the God, who is Father of lights, and who is pleased to enlighten the disciples' minds by the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, the Paraclete, grant you his blessing and make you always abound with the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the wondrous flame that appeared above the disciples Cleanse your hearts from every evil and fill them with its purifying light. Amen. And may God, who has united many tongues in the profession of one faith, give you perseverance in that faith, that by believing you may journey from hope to clear vision. Amen. And may the God, who is joy and peace,
peace and love bless you all, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. So in the peace of Christ, alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to
Down by the river, Heavenly Father, on this earth our mother, where the Dreamtime children long made a home before us. Our forebears in faith have built this mother church of St. Stephen, a family home for you and us. Stone by stone and prayer by prayer, they have raised this holy house. Familiar forms on foreign soil, a place where Brisbane could know Christ's sacrifice and feast, where you could speak and we could listen, where the tide of your mercy could flow. Here, saints and sinners have come, bringing their young and their dead, all their hopes and their dreams. Through times of sorrow and joy, stones have spoken of Easter, of a life that is bigger than death, of a love that has the last word. Through 150 years, we have made the building, and the building has made us a temple of living stones. Now we tell the story of your grace, thankful as we remember. By that same unfailing grace, may this cathedral never cease to be a home for all at the heart of the city, and a house for you, God with us, on this earth, down by the river. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. <laughs>